Hello everyone and welcome to the channel, my name is Cordant and we are about to start a new series here in the channel for Solasta Crown of the, Mag of the Magister. So this is a game, a classic RPG style game, it's turn based. It's based on Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition with some custom fiddling from Tactical Adventures. It's a very cool game, I've played uh, a little bit during Early Access, where we had access to a little bit of the game, not all of it. And we are going to start a new adventure. I have already created my characters, so in this case we have myself, Mr. Cordant, Black Shield, he is a wizard, Snow Dwarf wizard. The ability scores are kinda min-maxed, not too much, I didn't spend a whole lot of time re-rolling them, but just nice intelligence, nice constitution, nice dexterity, and some nice charisma as well. And there is not really much else to say about him. He's a philosopher, woohoo. <laughs> and this is our spell selection, not that important for right now. We have Miss Patricia here, my lover, Patricia Wetfoot. She is a Marsh Halfling, she is a rogue. She has 20 dexterity, 16 con, 16 charisma, 14 strength, again, nothing too fancy. We have our main tank, Mr. Corgan Stout Shield, reference to Baldur's Gate 2. He is at 18 strength, 19 constitution, 16 dexterity, the rest isn't that important. And his fighting style, I'm not sure if it says here, but he is a protector. Ah, okay, so it says here, protection. So this means when a creature you can see attacks a target other than you, that is within 5 feet of you, you can use your reaction to impose a disadvantage on the attack roll but I must be using a shield. So it's more of a protective character to try and make my companions safe. And finally, we have our cleric, which is Mr. Ar Albert Barlibru. He's a hill dwarf. He is a cleric and he is a battle domain cleric. Uh, 17 strength, 18 con, 18 wisdom. Again, nothing too, too fancy, but a good enough score. And his domain, the most important thing about his domain is that the battle domain not only allows me to cast certain wizard spells, which are very useful, but it also makes it so that I can cast spells that require, uh, let me see if I get this right, a somatic component, which means you would normally need to have a free hand to cast a spell you no longer need that free hand. If I'm using something like a Warhammer and a shield, I can still cast those spells. And that's really important for me because I like to use my clerics as off tanks, so he's also a frontliner, and not having him be able to hold a shield is kind of very detrimental to my playstyle. So that's mainly the reason why he is of the battle domain. Okay. So, without further ado, ah, one more thing, I have tweaked my difficulty, it says he is scavenger, the default one is authentic, but the most important part here is the custom difficulty, I set this on, because I want the deadlier AI and the merciless AI, these are two options that come disabled by default, this one makes it so that monsters will attack unconscious and dying characters to kill them. Default behavior is not to do that. And Deadlier AI makes it so that monsters will use powerful moves, such as AoE spells more often, and will shove characters to their death. So this is actually something that was toned down or nerfed during early access because some players thought it was too punishing to have the enemies push other characters into their deaths by using shove. So I want both of these on 
So that's why I'm using custom difficulty. And I also want the damage taken, enemy health multiplier and all that stuff to be core rules. So that's why I'm using custom. Okay, so with this out of the way, let's begin our new adventure. So, new campaign. We're gonna be using our own characters. So myself, my wife, Mr. Halbert, and Mr. Corrigan. Pretty classic lineup. Wizard, Rogue, Cleric, and Fighter. And let's begin. Yes, this is fine. And start the game. Come on. Before the Cataclysm, there were no gods on Celasta. No humans either. Then, the rift opened. Some say it was a magical accident. Or the work of an evil god. No one knows for sure. The Cataclysm destroyed the old High Elf Empire. Manakalan, they called it. And twisted the land beyond recognition. Now, only the brave and the foolish go there. In search of ancient treasures. But something is happening deep in those badlands. Whatever it is, it can't be good. It is the year 1024 after the Cataclysm. New states have arisen around the Badlands and crave its treasures. A newly discovered road offers a safer route into the ruined heart of the Empire from the Principality of Masgarth, upsetting the balance of power. The Legacy Council is formed to ensure that this knowledge is shared. It issues a call for agents to explore the Badlands in its name. Adventurers flock to Ker Siflin, the Principality's capital and the home of the Council. Four strangers meet in the Gravekeep's cask, close to the, clo to the Council chambers. Nice name. Cozy. This beer tastes like donkey piss. Not that I'm complaining. Is this the place for the Legacy Council job? Hope I'm not too late. Ran into a bit of trouble on the way here. Sit. Relax. Perhaps you'd enjoy a pint of this obnoxious ale. If you're here for the Council job, get in line. Though if this Lord Karen doesn't show up soon, I may go looking for him. Another round, barkeeper. Four of your finest flagons of donkey piss, please. Looks like you've been waiting here a while. Indeed. You mentioned something about some trouble. Would you care to elaborate? Well, I was making my way here when three bandits leapt out of the bushes with crossbows. They dragged me off to some decrepit prison and tossed me in a filthy cell that smelled of rat piss. Don't know what was holding the place up. Wonderful. Okay, so yeah, this is the same start as in the early access. And this is pretty much just a way for us to get to know our our characters. Oh god, I gotta get used to the the camera movement here. It's not um, the most familiar layout, let's say. Okay, tutorials, I think I still remember this stuff. Character selection and basic, basic movement, camera controls, understood. I do love the fact that the characters move in a quick pace. 
journal. Okay, so we have our journal. Journal contains much more information than the quest log. Okay. And the log lists your current objective, which is also the usual thing to have happen. J opens it up, quest log, journal, okay. So we gotta get away from this prison, find a way out. Crawling. To crawl through a hole, click the other side. Okay. Your character will automatically kneel, crawl and stand up as appropriate on the way to the desired destination. Okay. Ah, yes. Okay, so we can click it and he will crawl and go to the other side. Alright. I think I have to swap something around here. This is kind of messing me up. Uh -huh. Oh god, is it better or worse? <laughs> I don't remember, I think the other way is better. Let me just re-swap this real quick. Okay. Okay, that's done. We have a container. Okay, highlighting objects. We have a torch. But since we are a dwarf, we have dark vision, so we can see well in the dark. And over here, we get to interact with an element. Okay. In this case, I think we're pushing the rock. Come on. Okay. So, climbing and jumping. To jump or climb, simply click on the destination. Depending on the character's strength and proficiency with athletics, you can jump and climb between 2 and 5 cells. You can always jump over 2 cells, drop down 3 cells and climb up 1 cell, or climb up easy surfaces like ladders or ropes without any trouble. Okay. So, above. A character with strength below 15 and no proficiency in athletics cannot jump far enough to reach the chest. Ah. Below. A fighter with strength 15 to 20 can jump across 3 cells. So can a character with strength 11 to 14 plus proficiency in athletics. In general, the critical path is always open to characters without superior physical abilities. However, optional loot is sometimes harder to reach. Don't give up though. You may find another way to get this chest. Okay, so I think they're talking about this chest right here. Now, our character is strong, so he should be able to make the jump from over here to over there. Wonderful. And we got a potion of healing. Okay. On a side note, whoever decided to put the close button on the left instead of on the right should be shot. Moving on. <laughs> okay, so here we can push this object, allowing us to make uh, a bridge of sorts. And in case we were not able to jump over this gap, this would be the way to get the chest. Okay, other than that... Ooh. Okay, so we can see what I would guess are the three bandits that took us prisoners. We can push on the wall. Yeah! And defeat said bandits. Okay, so there's a chest. Okay, looting inventory, I still remember this. Stackable items. Okay, here pretty much we get our inventory back, our items. We get some silver coins, we get some rations, and some arrows. I guess we can just store them here. And now, anything else? No. 
Now we can just leave. Yeah. Nice move, that trip with the wolf. Glad you're no worse for wear. This council needs to get organized. They have no right to keep us waiting like this. Have another ale. It's not like you have anywhere better to be. I have a tale to tell as well. I too was attacked, but I put an end to my enemies with blood and pain. Let's hear it then. Don't be shy. Okay, so now we're up to the warrior style tutorial. Tutorial dashing. <clears throat> Moving to a point in the yellow area uses your main action to dash. Dash doubles your maximum movement for the turn. However, you cannot use your action to attack or cast a spell. Okay. Now, one of the things I do love about Solasta is the UI. Even though it's not the most pretty UI in the world, <laughs> it's very readable, it's very easy to use. And it's one of the things I've liked about the game a lot since I first tried it back in Oto October 2020. Okay, so uh, regarding to dash, I think this is something that was changed during early access. You now need to confirm, I believe, and it allows you to get a preview of the area you can get to. Before, you did not have this preview, which was kind of annoying. So we're going to abort this. And we are facing two starving wolves. And I'm guessing I'm just going to attack this one. Nice. And I'm going to place myself over here. We have a power, which is second wind. We can heal ourselves. But not something I'm going to do right now. So we're just going to end the turn. Ah, you missed. Tutorial attacking. Okay, so we just did this, so I know how to attack. And then we also have shoving. You try to shove an enemy back or down. Select shove and choose from the available options. If you shove an enemy backwards into a pit, they'll fall. No, thank you. <laughs> if you shove an enemy down, they will be prone, remaining vulnerable until they spend move points to stand up. So in this case, since this starving wolf has a cliff behind him, I'm going to try and shove him back to throw him off the cliff. Nice. Fell to their death, dead. Okay. And with this one, I'm just gonna stay right here. Because I'm not sure if wolves can push. But if they can push, I don't want to place myself in a position where I'm about to die, let's say. So let's end the turn. Dodging. Clicking dodge uses your main action and provides the following benefits. Until the start of your next turn, all attackers you can see have disadvantages on their rolls to hit and you have advantage on dexterity saving throws. Okay, so it's a, a defensive action. And for this wolf, I think I'm just going to try and kill him the no normal way. Lovely. Victory! Alright, so let's just move on over here. There's an interactable rock. Mm. Disengaging. To avoid an opportunity attack, you can use a disengage action. For the rest of your turn, you can move close to enemies freely without any risk of opportunity attacks. Disengage uses your main action though, so you won't be able to attack or dash during this turn. Okay, and what they want us to do here is to not move, because if we were to move around this area, 
it would trigger an attack of opportunity and we would die. I'm guessing die because this is apparently a tough opponent with 50 hit points, which is something I really don't want to face right now. So the tutorial even blocks us from doing anything else. So we're going to have to disengage in order to not provoke an attack of opportunity. And then move over here and use this rock to defeat the evil wolf. Yes! What a bunch of nandy yeah. pambies. You're lucky you weren't attacked by Sorax. Shut your gob or I'll shut it for you. The Badlands are thick with them, shape-shifting bastards. Go easy on him. He's just a harmless old drunk. Probably saw lizard folk or dragonborn or something. You think I don't know the difference? All those spines on their backs, those jaws. You've never seen anything like it. Not lizard folk, not troglodyte, not dragonborn, I'm telling you. No one believes in Sorax anymore. Except the Church of Anar, of course. There's a Sorak under every bed if you believe them. Easy now. Don't mock people for their faith. Read them books. Soraks are masters of deception, infiltration. Anyone here could be a Sorak. You'd never know. Yo, oh, come on. Huh, <laughs> you'll see. So, anyway. Soraks might be legend, but orcs are quite real and not just in the Badlands. I stumbled across a secret settlement right here in the Principality. Bullshit. Hmm. I traveled here from the east and left the main highway, hoping to save time by traversing the hills. The views were magnificent, and I should have kept my eye on the path, because it gave way beneath my feet, plunging me into Stygian darkness. Ow! That's gonna leave a mark. T okay, <clears throat> so here we have a tutorial regarding lighting and light sources. So light is kind of a big deal in Celasta, which is something I like. Uh, in Celasta you will explore deep dark places without natural light sources. It makes exploration and combat harder, especially for characters without dark vision. You can equip torches or cast light spells to reveal your environment for your whole group. You can light flammable items like torches or holders by interacting with them while holding a torch or by casting a flaming spell on them, like the cantrip Firebolt. Okay, so in this case, my entire party has dark vision, because we are a shorty party. We have three dwarves and a halfling, a marsh halfling. And... We can all see pretty well in the dark. However, for the purposes of this tutorial, we must complete the quest objectives. And as such, I believe we need to equip our light source. Yeah. And this way it shows us these torches over here. So I can interact with them, lighting them up. I can go back to my normal weapon. And examine the totem. Oh, nice. An orc hideout right in the middle of the Principality? How surprising. Let's hope they've eaten recently. Yes, lest they eat my tiny dwarf. Okay. Healing. If your character can cast healing spells, like a cleric for instance, press the cast spell button and select a spell in order to recover lost hit points. You can also use a potion found in nearby loot. Open the inventory and right click on the potion to use it. Do I have one? No, this is acid, which is an ingredient. These are all ingredients. <coughs> Refined oil, a torch, a light source. Couple of kits, couple of spell books, no healing. Okay, 
So we're currently at 3 hit points out of 10. Ah, okay, but we have a container here. Okay, which contains a potion of healing. I'm going to try and not use it. See if I can save it for um, some other time where I need it more. There they are. Discretion is clearly the better part of valor in this instance. Okay, so cautious mode. Activating cautious mode makes you slower, but it grants two benefits. Hidden objects and traps are easier to find and you are harder for enemies to spot. When an enemy starts to notice your presence, a gauge appears over their head, giving you time to react and return to hiding. Remain three cells above the enemy in this mode and you can't be detected. Ah. Okay, this is something I didn't remember. Or I didn't know at all. If I'm three cells above, I cannot get detected. Okay. So let's activate cautious mode. And make our way... Whoop, camera, please. Over here. And I think I'm safe, right? So it's like one, two, three. So they shouldn't be able to see me. Okay, we're gonna go up interact with this contraption okay which apparently opens this door okay stealthy I was wondering what this symbol was I am in bright light Okay, here I can stop being in cautious mode. And let's see what we can find on this side. Across the river. Okay. Jump across the little rocks. Nothing to... Oh, something to interact with over here. Abyss moss, an ingredient. A very rare moss found in the depths beneath the badlands. Okay. I'll take it. Uh, ah, I think there's vines. Yeah, okay, there are vines over here. And I think this is a resting spot. until they go. These creatures do hunt, right? Okay, so take a long rest. To recover hit points, special abilities and spells, you must take a long rest. To do so, you need to gather your party around a safe place and have one ration of food per party member. Safe places are represented by a campfire. They are also shown on the location map. Many spellcasters know more spells than they can recall at a given time. Prepared spells represent those a character can use by spending spell slots. Check your hero's list of known spells and choose which ones you want to prepare. Spells that are not prepared cannot be cast. Many characters know more spells than they can prepare, so choose carefully for the given situation. Okay, I understand. So let's interact with the fireplace. Okay, so hit points recovery. When the rest is complete, recover all hit points and half your hit dice maximum. Okay. Upon rest completion, you will recover these features. Spell slots. Roger. And post rest actions, your character's actions after the rest is complete. Okay, so after resting, we can prepare our spells. Okay. So take at least 8 hours to eat, drink and sleep and wake up ready for anything. Let's start our long rest. Okay. It's completed. We were completely healed. And we can now prepare our spells. Okay. I actually want the Thunder Wave here. 
yeah, like this. Okay, so let's validate and close. And we are done with our rest and spell preparation. We can now crawl over here because no orcs are in sight. Anything to interact with? I guess not. And we are out. I would have slaughtered every one of those green skinned monsters. Orcs have a very distinctive stink. I'm beginning to think Lord Karen might be a mythical creature. We've all told a tale of our travels here. All but one of us. Yes, but I have good reason for that. It's none of your bloody business. Come on now, don't be a killjoy. We all sang for our supper. Your turn. Fine. You want to know the truth? I stopped on the way here to visit an old friend of mine and discovered he was up to his eyeballs in debt with a loan shark. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Indeed. He put up a family heirloom as collateral and wanted me to reacquire it. Because you see, I can be quite stealthy when necessary. Okay, so we are now up to the rogue tutorial. I think it shares the tutorial with the ranger. And what we have here? We have to enter the fort. Use cautious mode to find the tracks leading to the weak point in the wall. Then enter the fort by crawling through the hole if necessary. On the way you can pick up the thieves tools that Liam left near the wall of the fort. Okay. So let's enter cautious mode. Stealth. Use cautious mode to move stealthily. Enemies can hear you if they cross your noise circle, and they will spot you as soon as you leave cautious mode. Your noise circle depends on your armor type and your stealth skill. Also, it's a good idea to avoid moving into an enemy's field of view while carrying a light source. Remain in cautious mode for the whole duration of this mission. You must make a stealth check if you attempt an object interaction while within hearing range of an enemy. Cool such as opening a door or chest or even pickpocketing, and you will remain undetected only if you succeed. Cautious mode also allows you to find and follow tracks. Understood. Okay. There's nothing over here. There are some tracks. Human tracks. Probably bandits. They look quite fresh. Uh, by the way, I'm reading this on this side of the screen, right here. It shows up when we hover... when we hover over something here, okay. We get to interact with this container. Using the camera, yeah, I know how to use it, thank you. We got some thieves tools. We already had some, but get another pair, I guess. Oh, Liam, always thoughtful. And let's just keep following the tracks. Ooh, there's a guard. Don't spot me. Thank you. Don't hear me? Okay. All good so far. Mm -hmm. Lock picking. To try picking a lock, mouse over a locked door or chest and left click. If you select your whole party, the most skilled character is automatically chosen for the task. This is an awesome quality of life feature. You must have thieves tools in your inventory to try picking a lock. Being proficient with thieves tools will help. Okay. Success, wonderful. And we should now be in the courtyard. Reach the next one. Okay, so we have some enemies here. Bandits. Let's try and stay out of the line of sight. It's just one, apparently. We have two more guards. Can I... Lockpick this without them noticing. Apparently I can. Cool.
interactable plants, I'm guessing for some ingredients. Uh, yep, angry violets. Take these. And now we can go up this vine, I think. Indeed. Okay. And there's a trap. Disarming traps. To disarm a trap, you must first detect it. Well, <laughs> if you try to open or lockpick a chest with a trap that you haven't detected, you'll only find out about the trap when you trigger it. To try disarming a trap, mouse over, uh, mouse over it and left click. You'll need to make a successful dexterity check. Thieves tools will help if you are proficient with them. Some traps can only be disarmed by triggering them. If you fail to disarm a trap, you may trigger it or lock it or simply need to try again. Okay. Sounds simple enough. Cool. Cool again. And now we have this container here, which is also trapped. Okay. And we get Liam's heirloom and 21 gold pieces. Nice. So now we need to escape from the fort. So let's get back from where we came. And oh, ho, ho. there you are, you filthy crook! You, That's not smart. What? You're drunk. Get out of here before I kill you. Think you scare me? Not anymore. Dude, I came here Grave for mistake. you. Why are you doing this? Liam, what are you doing here? I told you I'd take care of it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, critical characters. Sometimes in the course of your adventure, some non-player characters may become critical. This means if you let them die, the game is over. Wonderful. Surprise attack. If you attack an enemy while undetected, you gain the advantage of surprise. That means you have advantage on your roll to hit, and your opponent cannot react before the next turn. If you are a rogue, your attack will be a sneak attack, dealing additional damage. Understood. Okay, so Liam gets to go first, and misses. I get to go second. And I'm guessing the red squares means that if I move here I get detected. So let's try and make use of our ranged weapon. We have a short bow. And we can swap from our weapon sets once per turn. So I can no longer swap back to my daggers in this case. And we are gonna hit this guy and by checking out the, um, the box that shows up here when I hover him, it shows that Click to attack the target with advantage. The advantage being, Patricia is stealthy. Let's shoot the guy. A crit, nice. And dead in one shot. Yeah. Are you four here to see Lord Karen? Who's asking? Depends on who's asking. Well, if you're here for Lord Karen of the Legacy Council, that would be me. Okay. Fine. I'd like to present you with a bill for the time we just spent cooling our heels. Feel free. The council's bursary enjoys a good laugh. Might we ask a bit more about this quest of yours, sir, if you please? Well, I suppose it's better if you know what you're doing. What do you want to know? Are we going to work for you? Not exactly, no. I'll be your contact with the Legacy Council, which you will serve as deputies. That's why we need to go there and get you sworn in. We hear this is a mission for the Council, but what is it exactly? Dear Moraike, you don't know? I'll try to make it simple, but you know, 
politics. The council includes representatives of the most powerful and influential organizations in the Eastern Kingdoms. It was created to lead a joint effort to explore the Badlands. What are the organizations you mentioned? The council is, uh, how to put it, a non-governmental organization, meaning that state governments are not represented to avoid partisanship. Instead, there are delegates from the Guild of Antiquarians, the Tower of Knowledge, the Arcaneum, and the Circle of Denantar. And the Church of Einar guarantees fairness, led by Marshal Beric Sunblaze and Oathkeeper Lyra Keen. What are the Badlands, really? Simply put, they are a monster-ridden, chaotic wasteland that used to be the elven empire called Manicala. It was destroyed about a thousand years ago by the Great Cataclysm. Now, only ruins remain, full of forgotten knowledge, riches, and dangers. Sounds good. Which countries make up these eastern kingdoms? Simple. The Principality of Mazgarth, here, is in the middle. The Snow Alliance lies to the north, the Kingdom of Galavan to the east, and the New Empire to the south. All friendly, more or less, but the peace is fragile. Okay. We know enough. I think we know enough now. Thank you. What can you tell us about this place, the Principality? We don't exactly have the time. Anyway, the Principality of uh, Mazgarth okay. is ruled by Princess Kaiwood Silverflower. We are a wealthy state with fertile lands and the easiest access to the Badlands through a pass called the Copperhead Road. We're in the capital, Ker Kiflin, which was once part of the ancient Manikalan Empire of the High Elves. Hence the magnificent elvish buildings up there in the High Tower. While we don't have a state religion, all of the major faiths of Celasta are represented here. Though we tend to favor Einar, the god of valor and fidelity. We should go, don't you think? Very well. Come, gather your things. You're late for your swearing in. Hurry up and wait. The story of my life. <laughs> Okay. We have some cool tips in the loading screens. Rogues can use sneak attack to increase their damage when they attack an enemy that is in the cell next to an ally, unless they have disadvantage on their attack roll. Cool. The loading screens are longer than I remember, to be honest. Okay, so now. We are in Kerr Siflin, which shows up here. Finding your way. The Principality's capital is a large city. Right now, you need to find the Legacy Council. Okay, I'm guessing this is them showing me the way. Once you've been there, you'll have access to the fast travel function, but for now, you'll have to walk a little. Go north and walk up the stairs to Sunblaze Court. Then, take the stairs west to the council. Understood. Okay. So, I think this is a nice place to end this episode, our first episode. We got to check out our characters, do a tutorial for each of them. And let's actually reform our party here. In Solasta, there's not the the concept of um, the concept of a party face doesn't really exist, because all of your characters interact in any given dialogue, which is awesome. I like it very much. So this is just to reform our party formation. So as you can see here, the party formation was myself and Patricia in the front and my front line in the back. But now if I move they rearrange themselves so that I have a proper front line and a back line. So yeah, as I was saying, uh, this is a cool place to end this episode. I'm gonna do a quick save here. We can also pause the game using space, such as Baldur's Gate for instance, Neverwinter Nights, all that stuff. We got to check a little bit of each character in the tutorials. 
Uh, I do like the way this game does the introduction in the pub with everyone telling their story and fitting in tutorials into each of those sections. I think it's rather well done. I like it very much. And we can end it here so that we can start fresh our new episode exploring the city of Kersiflan and see what we can find here and start progressing on our main quest. So, as always guys, I want to thank you all for being here in the channel watching some Solasta with me. I hope you guys enjoy this new series. I hope it will be fun. If you guys have any thoughts, any questions about the game, leave a comment. If you want to get notified about future videos coming to the channel, feel free to subscribe. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe everyone.